so hello everyone so as you are seeing you are on a track of avocado so before jumping into avocado let's try to understand what instant app is and how under it avocado came into existence <clears throat> so have you guys used make a dao or minted uh, dai anyone you could you could just raise your hand yeah so today like minting dai is kind of just like a single transaction like you could just do it in one single transaction but back in 2018 17 when uh, makerdao was launched it was actually seven transactions seven different transactions that you need to do on ethereum and that's where instead up came into existence <coughs> by solving those seven transactions by merging them into one transaction in 2018 this was our first dashboard of instead up where you could just take out dai loan in just one single room and <clears throat> that's where we have started uh, making the defi experience seamless by doing uh, uh, different kinds of abstractions that was the transaction abstractions now this is how instead up looks like which is the most defi advanced dashboard over there where you could interact with more than seven protocols that includes makerdao aave compound etc etc and also you have different strategies that you could do like leverage save uh, etc etc and also the refinancing have you heard about refinancing anyone over here our like instead of refinancing what it does or okay just to give you a short thing about uh, refinancing it's like if you have a position on a uh, compound maker or aave it's not easy to move from one uh, from from one protocol to another so refinancing helps you to move your position from one protocol to another that's where the another feature that uh, created uh, the refinancing pool <laughs> okay so uh, before starting have you guys used like i guess you guys are using like evm chains do you guys use any more than one chain any more evm chains that could be ethereum polygon avalanche etc etc there are like all, almost like more than 10 10 to 20 chains so as you see as the new chains are popping up the dapps are trying to go multi chain which means that they are trying to cover more and more networks as their uh, new chains are coming across so if you see over here a uh, uh, user on twitter mentioned that to interact with ethereum scroll arbitrum uh, base chain optimism he had to have the native gas across like almost each different chain which was creating a liquid uh, liquidity fragmentation gas fragmentation and the another one was where you can see the usdc which is the same token but exists on multiple chains so that was creating an another fragmentation or a ux problem and you could see there were uh, did anyone of you receive optimism airdrop <laughs> oh great great so during the optimism airdrop there was a kind of a hack i would say what happened was that there was a a, a winter mute uh, kind of exchange they gave a l1 address that is ethereum address to optimism team and the optimism team sent it to polygon address which was a different address and due to that almost 20 million optimism tokens were kind of hacked so there was a front run by another hacker who kind of claimed those tokens and then there was that whole issue that was going on so you could see the safe multisig is not a uh, same across all the chains and that's where this issue has happened and now as you are using multiple chains on metamask there are a lot of chains that you have to switch and then do the interaction the dap also needs to adapt whenever you are trying to switch the dap ask for you do you want to switch to this network do you want to switch to this network and that's where you have to kind of keep on switching 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 so as you see lot uh, lot more dapps lot more chains are creating ux issues and that's where avocado comes into picture avocado is here to solve the uh, multi chain ux issues so you could say avocado is a next generation smart contract wallet 
do you guys know what smart contract wallet is a basic yeah you could just say uh, like, like basically instead of a eoa it's like a smart contract which acts like your wallet so it's like a smarter wallet where you can write a code and do more stuff so avocado is a next generation smart uh, smart contract wallet it simplifies your web3 interaction by addressing the ux multi chain ux issues so what are those issues as you see network gas and then the asset there were few more things you as i've already told you it's trying to address but how we are trying to address why avocado needs to be here So, <clears throat> Avocado has three core abstractions. The three core abstractions, let's talk one by one. The first one is the network abstraction. <clears throat> so, you could think a network abstraction as a, a, what is it? A universal remote that is able to control your TV set of box and a sound bar like if you have like if you have a home theater or something or maybe a small tv setup like one remote could control all the tv set of box sound bar and then whatever the netflix etc so you could say something on the similar analogy network abstraction is a master network uh, that could uh, that could control the underlying networks like if here you could see just being on avocado network you are able to send transaction optimism ethereum arbitrum polygon so we have more than 11 chains right now three more are gonna come soon so this is about network abstraction then coming to account abstraction i guess you if you are following twitter in the late 2023 you might be hearing a lot of account abstraction movement and everything i think in march also during some eth uh, it go global conference the, the whole hackathon was based account uh, on account abstraction so just to give you an analogy over here what is an account abstraction so let's let's talk about a eoa what is a eoa eoa purpose was just to do a like initiate a transaction on a blockchain that was basic interaction that you can uh, send a native token or interact with a smart contract that's the basic uh, functionality of an eoa but then coming to uh, but then coming to smart contract wallet in the analogy of smart contract wallet you could think as like a swiss army knife you know right swiss army knife it has multiple tools and everything so it's just like a one tool where you could do various actions like uh, at different scenarios like you could say like uh, what is it it could have multiple owners in your eoa there's a one private key that just controls if someone gets access of it it's kind of lost or it's, it could be drained <coughs> So in a smart contract wallet, you could have multiple wallets and it could do more stuff like you could batch the transactions. In the start, as I was explaining, seven transactions were batched into one single runway. So you can batch multiple transactions. So in, uh, in terms of Avocado, uh, Account Extra is a non-custodial wallet with the features like role assignments, as I was mentioning you, different owners or maybe convert into a multi-sig or maybe uh, add recovery mechanism. Suppose let's say you have lost your wallet, you want to recover it, uh, you could also add the recovery mechanism where in the six months you could get uh, access of your wallet. So that's recovery mechanism and inbuilt flash loan support for DeFi stuff. Do anyone have interacted with flash loans or heard about flash loans? You could just raise your hands if someone. Oh, okay. So, so whenever I ask a question, you could just raise your hands, yes or no. Yes means just raise your hands, no means. So I, it will be more interactive than me just explaining the presentation. So as you see, flash loan. So for using a flash loan on directly on a UI, you can't use it. You need a smart contract in between to use it. But in Avocado, the smart contract wallet inbuilt has a flash loan support where you can directly get the flash loan, execute your custom actions, and then return the flash loan. Uh, that's a uh, and that has a flash loan support. Then coming to the next one, that is gas abstraction. 
in the first i think in the third slide i've shown you like a like a tweet over here explaining that user was having multiple networks in each network he was having ethereum as a gas token look so the gas token was fragmented like he was having the same ethereum token on multiple networks so the gas abstraction is one of the biggest abstraction i would say why because we have a unified gas tank the unified gas tank is in usdc you top up on any chain and you use it on any chain so suppose let's say you top up on arbitrum usdc you could use that usdc to do transaction on polygon optimism even on arbitrum on any chains that avocado support so that's gas abstraction any doubts still here gas abstraction then coming to the omni chain wallet again in the third slide i have shown you that the how did the optimism hack happen there was a different address of safe on different chains and it was creating like a confusion between both the parties to understand where exactly it exists and due to that it was creating the hacks there there a lot of tweets and everything that you could see if you follow in twitter that safe is not uh, what is it uh, doesn't have same address across all the chains and we solved that issue by having a single account address across all the chains that avocado supports so if you are on polygon if you are on arbitrum you will be having the same address it's across uh, like you could say like a single address like a eoa so it's just a me i hope it's cool enough so before jumping more deep into avocado infrastructure just wanted to know who who do programming or who are non programmers here programmers oh all of our programmers then it would be easy i can go in there Yeah. 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 It's an externally owned account, so basically on the MetaMask you can have it. So uh, for your question, right? EOA is something that a blockchain has inbuilt, and it makes sure. Uh, and how you generate a EOA is based upon a mathematical equation. and how you generate a smart contract wallet it again based on a mathematical equation but it doesn't make sure uh, so, so you have to kind of make it sure that the generation of the smart contract wallet is also the same so in the omni chain wallet we have engineered to make sure that we have the same address across all the chains and we make sure that it happens that happens due to the create to opt code if you want to learn more you can uh, read about create to opt code So, using the create to opt code, you can kind of have the same address. And one more fun fact: When would you say it's a smart contract wallet? You on Ether Scan or any Explorer, you see a code tab or a contract tab, right? That means that you understand it's a smart contract wallet. But using create to, without even we deploying your Avocado wallet, we can generate your uh, smart contract wallet. So once you onboard to Avocado. your avocado address has been generated there is there is it has been generated mathematically you don't need to depend on uh, us or anyone it's fully non custodial you can directly go to a blockchain and know what's your address i'll be showing in you uh, the code how exactly it's been done but that's one one fun fact that you're going to without even deploying your smart contract wallet you will be able to generate your uh, avocado address <laughs> so avocado has like two kind of infrastructures one like one is the main infrastructure that is handling the gas and the network and the other infrastructure is handling the account abstraction that is on the smart contract side so for first let's start around the gas and the network so as you see a user is trying to do a transaction by signing a transaction it, here it's avocado dapp but it could be any other dapp like natively integrated like even aave could integrate avocado and it could become avocado native and then the the entry point in the whole avocado system is the avocado rpc i guess you might have been using rpc the rpc standard it's the same standard and for doing any transaction you have to first interact with the rpc when you're doing a transaction the rpc will look for the ideal broadcasters in the broadcaster network here you can see there are like n number of broadcasters so it's scalable it's scalable and 
it assigns to a idle broadcaster if you see 1 2 and bn are kind of uh, busy but the b2 is kind of free so it assigns to the b2 broadcaster and the b2 broadcaster before executing your transaction on the underlying chain let's go with an example suppose let's say you want to do a swap of usdc into eth on let's say arbitrum so you being on avocado network you just need to be on your metamask you just need to be on avocado network being on avocado network you will be signing a transaction saying that you want to execute a swap transaction that is usdc to eth on arbitrum that transaction will be sent to the rpc rpc send it to the idle broadcaster idle broadcaster validates your transaction and how much gas as i was explained right in the whole avocado ecosystem you have only one gas token that is usdc token that token acts as a, a transacting network gas fee it validates with the usdc gas system and then after validating it if everything looks good you have enough balance and everything then it broadcasts to the underlying network so here in the example it's arbitrum and while broadcasting or executing the transaction on the underlying network arbitrum the broadcaster upfronts your uh, your gas fee suppose let's say it was costing you like 0.01 eth on arbitrum so the broadcaster pays on behalf of you once it pays on behalf of you after the transaction has been executed it will settle that uh, gas fee 0.01 eth in the usdc gas management system and you will be having a deduction of the equivalent amount let's say if it's like uh, you could say like roughly around whatever the amount that is going on and that's the whole infrastructure of the avocado like how the account and the network works then coming to the smart contract side <coughs> on the smart contract side as you have seen the broadcaster was sending a transaction to the blockchain but what exactly was happening on the smart contract was that the broadcaster was calling the forwarder contract on the forwarder contract it checks if your avocado wallet has been deployed or not if it's not deployed it will deploy your avocado address the address that shown on your dashboard or that has been computed mathematically it deploys the factory contract deploys the avocado non custodial wallet and then after that it executes your <coughs> it executes your swap transaction and after like basically it sends the data to the avocado wallet and the avocado wallet executes a custom execution so the custom execution as i was explaining it's like a swap transaction here it was more like allow it's a more in depth view first it was giving an allowance after it was giving an allowance it was swapping after it was swapping it was sending the tokens to a recipient so it was like swap and send like a swap from uh, usdc to e and i've sent it to a person x so that's on the smart contract side before jumping into uh, the code side just a small code that i wanted to show how exactly you'll be transacting on avocado network any doubts so far yeah Uh, so when you say you pay the gas cost up front mm -hmm. and uh, there is no actual value has not been sent yet and you paid the gas right what if the transaction fails what happens to the gas cost that you paid up front so so it's an interesting question so as you said <clears throat> if a transaction is failing on a blockchain which means that even if you have sent with your eoa if it's failing on a blockchain you are, you, you got a deducted balance it it does uh, uh, what you say take your native gas like whatever if you, even if it's taking a dollar or something that has been uh, cancelled in the same ux has been designed for avocado for the security purposes that if a transaction fails the transaction why a transaction could fail let's say a swap was executing but there was a different price that was going on during the execution the swap has failed which was the, which means that it's something that it depends on your custom execution due to that it has failed now whatever the failed amount is there the failed amount will be settled in your us uh, in the usdc gas management system so it's exactly the same ux there is nothing different if you have a successful transaction you have a successful deduction if you have a failed transaction still there is a deduction but that's for a failed transaction any more doubts yeah yeah so if 
if i initiated a transaction for example mm-hmm. for swap so do, for swapping yes sir. i initiated a transaction mm-hmm. and then uh, now you you are going to deduct the gas at the end of it right yeah, so if i simultaneously that. withdraw the amount to the <laughs> okay so as i was explaining you it was like a overview of how the things were working but underlyingly if you see the code and everything we do have enough security checks which means that when you're sending the transaction the ulgc gas has been sent to into a locked state so that amount has been locked and once the transaction has been executed if it's using less than that it will kind of take from the locked state it definitely can't be more than that same as your ethereum you mentioned that this is a maximum amount if it goes above that the transaction will fail is exactly the same ux you could see you have a fixed locked amount if the locked amount is more than that the transaction will fail if it's less than that the transaction will success and whatever the remaining balance is there it will be getting refunded so on a top view i just explained that it was just simple enough but underlyingly there are enough checks to make sure there are no attack vector like this <clears throat> Okay, so I'll be just showing you a small code how exactly we'll be transacting on Avocado network. So try to bear with me if uh, I'll ask you if there are any doubts at the end of the session. <clears throat> no. Did you guys use Bunges? Anyone? Bun, bun, yes. No, no, no one yet. Huh? B U N J S. You have used right? Huh? Okay. For for my use case, it was helpful. So I'm using bun, yes, over here. So as you see, first I init the wrapper. Once I've initiated the wrapper. then bun install at the rate ethers at the rate 5.7.2 so i am initializing the ethers js you could use web3 or any other library like vim or anything but i'm using here ethers js so the first step would be me initializing the ethers js like importing it sorry you want me to zoom a bit i'm not sure maybe ye zoom kar sakte ho kya basically i wanted to okay i wanted to show the terminal like Anyone know how to increase the font size? Huh? Sir, command, command plus. Command plus. So for me, it's a default thing. So I'm using that. So the first step was importing the ethers.js library, and then after that. So first we need the provider we need the underlying provider let's for this example let's talk about it as polygon and then the avocado provider so the underlying provider and then avocado provider so once i have initialized this then the next one is having a wallet or a sign up okay so i have a wallet where in my dot env there's already a private key that has been injected <coughs> and then the next step so first let's talk what exactly we are going to execute at the end of the transaction 
So at the end of the transaction, let's say you have an avocado wallet. Maybe let me show you how my avocado wallet also looks. So this is the web app interface of an avocado wallet. So on avocado wallet, I have, uh, as you see, there are like three tokens. The three tokens are like uh, ETH, uh, USDT and USDC. So before doing any transaction, as you know, on EOA, you need to have the gas tokens for doing any transaction. The same way you need to deposit or maybe kind of get the gas token. So I'll be depositing five for now. And the initial transaction for depositing the gas token is free. This is one way to get uh, this is one way to get your USDC uh, gas token. The other way is that at the end of the session, I'll be sharing you all a promo code. Using that promo code, you'll be able to redeem into your gas tokens. So before going, just ask any one of us. We are three. You can just ask for the promo code. We'll be giving you so you can use it. So. It will be taking some time uh, to deposit, but while meanwhile it's depositing, the end goal of the whole coding session was that uh, you are able to do a transaction to send the USDT token on Polygon to uh, some other person. Maybe let's say uh, my uh, owner address or some other address. Okay, so that's the end goal that I wanted to achieve. So for that, the first step would be that. I kind of generate my avocado address. How would I generate? So on the forwarder instance, as I was explaining in the smart contract infrastructure, we have a forwarder contract. On the forwarder contract, we have a function compute address. So you call that. So you see this is the address. You, you call that address. with the owner address. I'll explain you what exactly index means, but for now, let me compute. Okay, so this is how I generate my avocado address. So as I said, we need an index on avocado. You will be not be able to generate one address, but you will be able to generate multiple address. Like how you have your seed phase, right? Suppose let's say you have one seed phase from that you could derive more private keys and then under that you could derive more. So the same way, in the same fashion, you have one owner address, which is, uh, which is this address on the top. And then using that you place an index, the index starts from zero. With zero, you'll be getting one avocado address. With uh, one, you'll be getting another address like that. You could have up to around like uh, maximum of two to the power of 64, I guess. Maximum two to the power of 64. I hope you might not need that many wallets, but in case you need, we have that much capacity to generate. Once the address has been generated, the next step is to construct the signing parameters or the signing transaction data. So have you guys used EIP 712, the signing signature part EIP 712. Okay, so basically it's a standard which is being followed for an off-chain signature. So it has a typed, uh, what's the type data sign. So you mention what data needs to be signed. It's like your TypeScript kind of a thing for signing. So, So these are the types. So the main type is this. It needs two, uh, two arguments that is params and forwarder parameters. And then under forwarder parameters, you can just see the type and then you can construct this data. There are uh, the comments as well, but uh, I'll try to explain while I'm filling this data at the bottom. And in the EIP 712, there's a specific parameter called as domain. The domain is like a unique identifier for a smart contract. 
so here if you see the unique parameters are are being constructed based on uh, the two parameters one is the avocado your avocado address and the underlying network you're signing just to make sure there is no replay attack that whatever the transaction has been executed on polygon doesn't execute the same thing on uh, on arbitrum or other network we have a solve parameter that ensures that whatever this transaction that you have signed is specifically for that why we have used in salt why not over here is to make sure that you are on avocado uh, network and under avocado network you are able to do the transaction if i change over here metamask or any other wallets keep on asking you to change the network so there the purpose of the network abstraction is getting defeated so this is how we have constructed the domain parameters and then the main parameters so in the main parameters the first one is the action as i mentioned the action was to send the usdc token to the to some other address let's say for now it's an owner address so let's try to construct the actions so that is that uh, i have to use a transfer method on since i have a usdc token So this is a USDC, so USDT token on Polygon, and then this is a ERC twenty instance. In that, this is just the R, uh, ABI I'm using, but for the construction of the call data. For now, I'm transferring it to owner. That would be 0 0.1 uh, USDT. Now, the type of action is an array. So, as I mentioned, you could uh, you could batch multiple different actions. Like in just one single transaction, you could send your USDC to uh, like 10 addresses, like uh, maybe 100 addresses, whatever. It, you could combine all the action. <coughs> and so the action is a type of, here you can see this is a type. So the first one is a target, the target address that you want to interact. That is a USDT token on Polygon. Next, the data, that is a call data. Other one is the operation. Operation was meant to be used for dot delegate call, dot call, and as I mentioned, we already have an inbuilt flash tone support. So, using this, you can mention which action you want to do. So for now, it's just a simple one. So it's a dot delegate call. Sorry, it's a dot call. So the operation is zero, and then the value is zero. I guess you might be knowing what value is. It's like sending your native token, like native gas token, on a chain. So that's value. These are the actions. And once the actions has been constructed, you need an ID. It's for the security purposes, whatever the operations that you have been using, based on that, you will be getting an outcome. So suppose let's say if you're using all zeros in the operation, then the ID would be simply be zero. But if you're using at least one, the ID will be one. So you could just see into the documentation, I'll attach later as well. But for now it's zero. Then the nonce. You guys know basic concept of nonce, what exactly it was meant to be. So nonce is to make sure that the transactions have been executed sequentially. So on EOA, you have your nonce starts with zero. And then on any smart contract wallet, there is no replay. Attack. We have a nonce. And just to uh, kind of create a future trip, we created a non-sequential nonce, which means that when you're trying to uh, create a bunch of transactions, the bunch of transactions were mainly to do different purposes. Because let's say you have, you, you have done some high level, uh, what is it, a feature for that. If there is a blocking transaction or something, that high level feature can't be executed. So the, for the purpose of that, we have a non-sequential nonce. So in the non-sequential nonce, we use the nonce to be minus one, which means that there is no order needs to be executed. So that can be executed anytime. But if you want a real nonce from the forwarder contract, you could call the our nonce function with the owner and the index. It will return you the latest uh, nonce for executing if you want a sequential or a continuous transactions. And then salt. 
just in case if you want let's say in case you have a same transaction data you want to for the signature generation you want a different parameter you will be using the salt the salt could be any random string of bytes 32 so for now it's just the hash of zero it's just a, like, like direct zeros the source source is a uh, more like a revenue generation model in avocado where the dApps could earn the 10 percent of whatever the revenue that is coming that is for the source metadata is just for the external uh, protocols to use for any other purposes for now we can skip it the forwarder parameters to create a similar ux like a uh, yo way you could construct you could uh, assign the gas how much gas limit you want to put the gas price do you want to keep it low high or whatever the gas price that is going and then the valid after valid until so the valid after and valid until is more like in valid after you mention a timestamp which means that after that timestamp only your transaction is eligible for execution valid before it's the reverse where before that timestamp only your transaction is valid after that the transaction will fail on the blockchain the value is for the forwarder contract to send the native token like let's say if you're doing a transaction polygon to send matic token to your avocado address and these are the parameters that has been constructed basically we need two parameters params and forwarder params has all the main uh, details required for your the custom execution and then the forwarder parameters that is related for your blockchain customization how do you want to customize it the next part is broadcasting the transaction so for the broadcasting of the transaction we have a special method called as transaction broadcast but soon it will be replaced with something similar to avocado send transaction avocado unsend transaction uh, sorry sign, send unsigned transaction something like that <clears throat> so for this broadcasting i have constructed the parameters but for execution i need a signature that is a owner signature so for that let's construct the signature signature is nothing but i've explained it's like uh, signing a message with a standard uh, that is eip712 this is the method that is specifically for eip712 to sign the data so first one it takes domain then the types and then the cast parameters this is a signature that i pass a signature so if you see it's an array over here why it's an array because your avocado could be uh, a multi-sig as well or could be a multi-owner as well so there could be a lot of configurations that could be done in your avocado so for that it's not only it doesn't take one signature but it could be n signatures or based on the threshold it could be that many things. the signer so here the signer is the owner address so the owner address is a wallet that i've been generated initially then here also the owner that i need to pass then this is a basic of how you kind of write a code to broadcast the transaction but before broadcasting the transaction and really executing it maybe let me show you a small demo <coughs> let me show you a small demo on avocado app how you do a transaction then i'll be trying to simulate that exactly the same thing on the code so as you see i have my 5 usdc gas token and using this 5 usdc gas token suppose let's say i wanted to connect with Aave. so i connect so now i'm connected to Aave. so on Aave, i could say even if i want to switch the uh, network right I can just go to uh, base chain and then on base chain I don't have assets that's why it's not showing maybe let me go to arbitrum supply just I click on switch back end on the web app the switching has happened you don't get a pop up or anything and like this I can just go to polygon again then click on 
supply and then again i click on switch switch has happened you don't see that's the network uh, abstraction that has been done now let's say i supply one currently the Aave app doesn't support uh what is it avocado natively that's why we are not able to abstract the thing but when i try to send uh, the allowance transaction on avocado it asked me over here that you wanted to do a send transaction this is an allowance transaction and then after allowance so once the transaction gets confirmed i'll be able to proceed to do the deposit and yeah i think the transaction got confirmed so i'll be depositing it so as you see we have a feature called as a transaction breakdown so whatever the transaction that you're trying to do we kind of show you the breakdown what exactly you were trying to do in that transaction so the transaction was there was an allowance and after that you were getting a ave token that is one ave token that is getting minted and then your usdc was going out of your wallet so we have a clean picture of a transaction breakdown so that you can know before doing any transaction what exactly it's executing under the hood so i click on submit it asked me for a signature so basically you are seeing right is exactly the same data that i've constructed in the code i click on sign and the transaction is being processed and then it will be sent Okay, so this is the web app demonstration, like how you could execute the transaction on another network. <laughs> another network and on another DAP. You could directly connect with the wallet connect and interact with any DAP. Now coming to the code part, let me execute <laughs> this code. So before that, One second, just try. Okay, so basically I'll just try to uh, debug this, but what was supposed to happen that it was able to send the transaction. Once the transaction has been sent, you'll be getting a transaction hash. Here, if you see the code, the in the action, it was supposed to send a USDT on Polygon to my owner address. For now, I have a, another code that I'll try to execute it. Oh, sorry, just a second. I didn't use the private key. For the security reasons. <laughs> Where did you record the private key?
It was supposed to be a prerequisite step, but I kind of missed it. So it's here. So I'll be executing the uh, the code. Probably it should work now. Maybe for no, I'll use I'll use the non sequential transaction. Why I got this error is because with the same nouns of zero was actually being used for another transaction that I read on Polygon for the first time. That why there was this error. But when I change it to non-sequential, which means that there is no order, the transaction could uh, will be executed now. So now I got a transaction hash. I take this transaction uh, hash and I go to the Avocado scanner. If you see on Polygon, the Polygon scan, it's basically will try uh, will send the 0.1 usdt you can see on the dashboard it should deduct it got deducted over here let's see over here it's taking time but you so you got the basic idea so basically you construct a signature data and then you try to send that for the execution of the avocado network so, so far, any doubts? Any doubts? Non sequential, yes. Not the replay attack, but the, the non sequential uh, uh, nonce feature was designed mainly to create a feature where you the feature is not dependent on the uh, nonce because you have one avocado wallet. Let's say you are trying to, maybe you are doing a cross chain send, cross chain bridge. So basically you have sent a transaction for a bridging and then after that on the bridging once the token has been bridged you need to execute some custom execution so we have to take the signature beforehand since we are taking the signature beforehand if i block your nonce over here on that particular chain you can't use it so over there we take a non-sequential non-signature which we store and when the whole process has been done it will be executed in the meanwhile you could do other transactions as well on the same chain like if you like let's say you could uh, the target chain for the cross chain bridging was uh, avalanche you could uh, what do you say on avalanche you could start doing the other transactions once the bridging has been completed we'll be sending the transaction basically we'll sending your signature for execution so that's the feat, uh, that's the main goal of non sequential that you create your signature without without blocking your other transactions on avocado because while you're using avocado it shouldn't be just be like a wallet it should be more be like you're able to do a lot more higher level features. <clears throat> so coming back to the presentation, Avocado Protect is like a, a what is it, like a security name or a kind of like an umbrella under which on basically on the DAP, we have features like 2FA. You guys might be using 2FA, right? So the 2FA is more like uh, you enter your password and the other one could be you'll be getting a code on your email, password or or anywhere even if you're using a, a TOTP or anything. So the same way we have constructed for the avocado where when you have a wallet to that wallet if you have to initiate a transaction you need a signature from your private key and then you need a, a, basically a 2FA uh, like like a SMS, email or TOTP confirmation on the other hand. Just let me complete then I'll go ahead. So once this two has been done, over here you can see the user signature and once the whole process, basically 
there will be an instead of sign up that will be that will be confirming your sms email or whatever the google auth then once the whole thing has verified it will sign a trans taking these two uh, signatures will send to the blockchain for execution even if it, there is one even let's say if the user trans uh, user signature you won't be executed uh, the transaction can't be executed if there is only instead of sign it can't be executed so you need two parties in order to come together to do a transaction when the 2fa is in so that's the 2fa feature and then as you have seen the transaction breakdown i have shown you like how it was able to kind of show you what assets were going out and what assets were going in and we have another feature called as automated uh, token uh, uh, revoke approval thing which means that whenever you see a uh, allowance kind of a thing like a infinite allowance it suggests you that at the end of the transaction you make the allowance zero in case if the external dap is kind of uh, maybe let's say there was a uh, what to say a issue or something where your assets are being drained in that case it could be avoided using this automated revoke approval thing it's just another meme so yeah so any doubt so far i'll be explaining you this but any doubt so far who is the partner just a second he's just asking so into fa okay into fa i wanted to ask one thing like how exactly it's working like i understood like you know there there is one insta app signer mm -hmm. which is deployed on some uh, server or somewhere uh so there is a service that's there and it is generating a, a otp yes. and like how is it working that's i want to okay so just to go in depth into the 2fa thing so how it works it i guess this part is clear the top yeah. part that signing then the instead of sign so what we do is that on the ui a user request for uh, doing a transaction we give a separate model or a separate page where we ask them how do you want to authenticate they select one of these three option you could you could set any one of this or you could select all three but you need one option to select let's say you have selected email we have a service that generates a otp and it sends to your email and you need to enter the exact code and you have to send it to our backend securely once you have sent it securely the backend validates it validates the code if both are correct then the instead of sign you might be thinking the instead of sign up could be just be a eoa or something but it's like a multi computation uh, uh, what is it a signer which means that there are more parties just to generate this instead of signer so to generate this instead of signer more parties come together validate that otp and then they do this uh, what is it signing and a signature has been generated the signature is being combined so if you see on the code as well here the signature was an array so if there was no 2fa enable the signature uh, array would just be one with the uh, with the owner signature but when the 2fa is enable there needs to be another signature from the instead of signer so that needs to be enable is it set to sign or it is set like the signer yeah signer is uh, the instead of signer is currently controlled by the instead of team itself but the 2fa feature is completely non custodial when i say non custodial why i am mentioning that is because here even if or uh, like let's say the the instead of signer is kind of compromised or something instead of signer alone can't do anything and even if let's say uh, you want to do a transaction without instead of signer we have another uh, backup uh, feature called as backup signer so in the backup signer you add another address as one of your backup like more like your hardware wallet where you don't want to take out connect it do a transaction with them instead you use on different so using those user signer and then the backup signer combining that you could still do a transaction so with that the whole feature is completely non custodial and on top of this we are going to bring more recovery mechanism just in case we have lost this user signer and you have a backup signer and then the instead of signer there'll be a process in which you will be able to recover your address even if it's lost even if the first one is compromised or lost compromise is most draining of funds but even if it's lost
So any more doubts? Uh, it's fine. Maybe after this we can talk. It's fine. It's up to you. Okay. Okay, so as you have seen, Instagram is like one of the, uh, like basically Instagram lab has like four different projects or four different products. The first one I've shown you, the Instagram Pro, that is like the advanced DeFi management portal. Instagram Lite is, have you guys heard about YN? YN, YN, on YN. Okay, so basically it's like a vault where you put your assets and then it kind of generates yield for you. It's more like that. It's, you have a doubt? Okay. So... Instead of light is that, then Avocado have been explaining you. Fluid is the most advanced DeFi protocol. I would say that will be coming early next year. I don't want to talk more about it as of now in this workshop. Maybe we can connect out or something, but the details are out for the fluid. You can look more by going into instead of a blog post or instead of tweet, you'll be able to find more about fluid. So this is from the Yeah, that's it. Any, I think, yeah, that's it. Any doubts so far? Uh, if not, I can close this. Yeah, I agree.